Hello, my name is Rick Bonilla and thank you for spending a little time with me. Today I'm bringing you a slightly different video. This one is about a Photoshop hack that I've been using for a little while and I thought I would share it with you. I could get all technical and give you all the controlled alt shift buttons combinations and numbers but like most artists I'm a visual person so I'm gonna go through it the long way clicking the button so you can see what I'm actually doing and then if you know the shortcuts or go online and look up the shortcuts you can incorporate it to your work this is something that is not set in stone so you can use it with your artwork you can use it as part of your process or you don't have to use it at all also I'm making this short tutorial assuming that you already have your printer set up to your Photoshop if you don't then you need to go ahead and do that because this is not what this tutorial is all about. Okay, let's get started. Once you have your image in your scanner, you go to your file tab, import, for me it's WIA support. Get this little screen right here where I hit start and I look for the scanner that I'm going to use. I have a couple hooked up to the system. So this is the one I'm going with. Then I get this screen right here. I usually make my screen captures, my scans in color, and I get a choice from my printer on what DPS to use. I can go from 300 to 600 and above, but for our purposes, all we need is 300. So I go ahead and hit OK, and now we wait for it to load. Once you get your image scanned, you're going to notice that a lot of times it doesn't match the size of the paper. That is okay. That a lot has to do with how many DPIs you use to scan. It's something that can be adjusted. That is one of the reasons why we scan it in Photoshop. So we can improve, adjust, or change the layout. In this case, the artist, Mr. Carl Waller, has left some markings on the image to let us know what he wants used and what he wants cropped. With the image in Photoshop, you're still going to notice that the blue is visible and that is something that we want to get rid of, you know, get rid of the underdog. So you're going to go to your image, mode, grayscale tabs, discard the color, and you will notice that that non-photo blue turns into a light gray, which is still visible. In order to get rid of that, you go to your image tab again, adjustments, and you're going to play a little bit with the level. As you can see, when I start messing with the levels, you'll see in the change in the numbers, the lines become either darker or lighter. So I go ahead and adjust them until I get the desired effect. Then you hit OK to finalize the process. Moving along, we select the area that we want. Once that is selected, you go ahead and go to your edit, copy. You move it on to wherever you need it to go. In this case, I have a file already pre-selected. Go to edit again and hit paste. You're going to notice that your image does not match the size of your paper. Not a problem. This can be corrected by going to your edits tab, going down to the free transform tab, and now you can resize, rotate your image. Now we need to adjust the image to the proportional size of your template. For this, you can go ahead and pull on the image on all four sides. But you're gonna notice that although you're filling up the space, your image is not going to be proportional. Not a problem. For that, 
will use this nifty little trick. By clicking on the link, this will even up the width and height proportions, getting rid of any distortions. And if you need to make any more adjustments and see what's going on in the background, then you will go to your Layers tab, put it on Darken, and this will allow you to see through the white pixels. So you can fine-tune your adjustments. Now to change the color of the image. You start by creating a new layer, going over to your Fill tool, and pulling up your color paint. Know that non-photo blue is not the only color that you have to use. There's many colors you can use, but this is the color that fits the type of work that I do. If non-photo blue is the color you decide to go with, here is the number that you need. If you want to use different numbers, you can always Google the denominations. There are many places on the net that you can find all the numerical values for the color. Once you pick the color that you need, hit the OK button, take your filler tube and go ahead and fill the image. You can clearly see that you cannot see anything other than the non photo blue. Don't panic, you haven't messed anything up. You just go over to your layers palette and you're going to change your layer from normal to screen. This will allow you to see the whole image in non photo blue. From here on, please don't forget to save your changes on a Photoshop file just in case you need to make any other adjustments. Go to your print tab and make your necessary adjustments to print depending on the printer that you have. Just a quick recap, this can be used for you to scan your pencils, turn them into non photo blue so you can go ahead and ink them. This can also be used if you already have inks and you need to turn them non photo blue to color them. Now there's many variations of this. You can also just make some areas non photo blue and leave some areas black. That way if you need to leave some areas in black and white and color some areas and vice versa. There's many uses for this. Now that I've nudged you in this direction, go ahead and play with it. Let me know what you come up with. I'm always up for new ideas. Drop me a message in the comment section. Hope this Photoshop hack can help you out. I know it has been very useful to me over the years. And now that we're getting to the end of the video, if you like what you saw, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Once more, my name is Rick Bonilla. Thank you for spending a little time with me and have a great day.